Hello friends! Happy Lord's Day! Victoria Tunison in here. I'm so excited to worship the Lord with all of our mind, with all of our heart, and with all of our strength. This is how we worship. Prepare worship with prayer. Wear proper attire. Bring your Bible. Prepare your offering. Sit properly for worship. Organize and clean your surroundings. Avoid distractions. Lift up your voice for praise and worship. And finally, give God your full attention. Let's worship! Let's pray. God, thank you so much for another wonderful Lord's Day. God, I ask that as we dig into your word, that you would continue to show us about who you are and how you made us and how you know us and how you love us. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen.
little while ago, I watched the new Spider-Man movie and oh my gosh, it was so good. You know, Spider-Man is one of my favorite superheroes. Do you have a favorite superhero? Now, do you want to know why he's my favorite superhero? Well, he has this awesome strength that he can lift huge stuff with and he can swing around wherever he wants to go and he doesn't have to wait in traffic forever and ever and ever. But my favorite part is that he has this spidey sense that tingles. So anytime there's danger, he knows when it's gonna come. He is unstoppable. Can you think of some other unstoppable things? What about a runaway train? Oh my goodness, that sounds kind of dangerous, but it is unstoppable. But you guys want to know what else or who else is unstoppable? That's right, God. His plans and his promises will always come true because it's part of who he is. He's God. He's a promise keeper and he is good. So let's pick up where we left off. Last week, we learned that Jacob got tricked by his uncle Laban, not just once, but twice. Uh-oh. But in the end, he still continued to work hard because he wanted to be with the woman that he loved. And not only did he get to be with her, but he was blessed with many kids. 13 to be exact. Now, the part of the story that we're going to look at today happened 20 years after that. And so Jacob had been working for his uncle Laban for 20 long years. Wow, that's a long time. Let's take a look at what happened happens in Genesis 30 and 31. 20 years had gone by since Jacob had left his home and family. 20 years he had worked for his uncle Laban. By this time, Jacob had 10 sons and at least one daughter. After Joseph had been born, Jacob had asked Laban to let him return to Canaan, but Laban had begged him to stay. Please stay, Laban had pleaded. I know that the Lord has blessed me because of you. So Jacob had agreed to stay, and Laban had agreed to pay Jacob for his work. All the spotted, speckled, and dark-colored sheep or goats would belong to Jacob. Since that time, many animals had been added to Jacob's flock. Jacob was now a wealthy man. Laban's sons were not happy about this. Jacob knew that they believed his flocks should belong to them. And Jacob also knew that Laban's attitude towards him was not what it had been. So when the Lord told Jacob, go back to the land of your fathers, Jacob knew it was time to leave. Without a word to Laban, he gathered his wives, his children, and his flocks and started for Canaan. After three days, Laban learned that Jacob was gone. Laban started after him. Seven days later, Laban caught up with Jacob. That night, God spoke to Laban. The next day, Jacob watched Laban and his men. He wrinkled his forehead with concern as they drew nearer. He knew that Laban would not be happy with him. Why did you run away without telling me? shouted Laban. You didn't even let me kiss my grandchildren and my daughters goodbye. You know it is in my power to harm you. But last night God told me not to say anything to you, good or bad. Jacob answered, I left without telling you because I thought you might try to take my wives and children away. Uncle Laban, Jacob continued, I have been a faithful worker for you for 20 years. During that time, I was careful to take good care of your animals. I didn't complain about my work, whether it was blistering hot or freezing cold. I worked 14 years to pay my debt to you for your daughters, and these past six years, I have worked to earn my animals. During that time, you changed my pay 10 times, but God was with me. You would have sent me away empty-handed, 
but God knows how hard I've worked for you. And that is why he talked to you last night. Jacob, in a way, everything you have is from me. Laban spoke sharply. These are my daughters and my grandchildren. The animals you have came from my flocks, but it wouldn't be right for me to keep my daughters and their children. Laban's voice was kinder now. Let's make a peaceful agreement, he offered. Jacob agreed. So both families gathered some stones into a big heap. These stones are a witness between us, said Laban. I will not go past this pile of stones to harm you, and you will not pass it to harm me. Jacob repeated the promise. I will not harm you, and you will not harm me. Then the two men and their families shared a meal together. Early the next morning, Laban kissed his daughters and grandchildren. Then Laban returned home, and Jacob and his family traveled on to Morcana. For many years, people called that place Mizpah, a place of blessing, for it was there that Laban said to Jacob, May the Lord keep watch between you and me when we are away from each other. Whoa, so many things happened when Jacob took his family and went away to his hometown, right? Let's review. So, Uncle Laban refused to give Jacob what he owed him in sheep. Do you guys remember? It was either the spotted sheep or the striped sheep. Oh my goodness, he kept changing it and changing it and changing it. What was that about? So Jacob decided, you know what? It was time to go. So he took himself and his family and his servants and his sheep and his camels and he took them all and he started to go back to his hometown. But when Laban found out that all of his family had disappeared, he got angry. And he went after Jacob and his daughters. And as he was going, he was going, he was going, he was ready to fight Jacob and let him know and give him a piece of his mind. But what ended up happening was that one night God spoke to him and told Laban not to tell Jacob anything good or bad. So the moment when Laban caught up with Jacob and everyone else, they started talking about why Jacob had left and why Laban hadn't paid Jacob the right amount. And they realized one thing they realized that God was keeping and protecting Jacob just as he had promised and that God was speaking to Laban about the situation they were in and being able to let Jacob go. So they ended up coming to an agreement and they ended up building an altar as a sign for their promise that they were no longer going to fight. And in the end, Laban was able to say, see you later and bye-bye to his daughters and his grandchildren. And Jacob was finally free to find his own home now. While all of this was happening, you know who was behind the scenes of it all? That's right, God. He was talking to both Jacob and Laban about how they should go and what they should do. And when they obeyed God's word, God's promises were unstoppable. So this makes me think, Hmm. I remember that in the Spider-Man movie, sometimes Spider-Man was in a bit of a pickle. He was either stuck or his identity got found out or the bad guys were chasing him. It was really unfair. And some things I didn't even get why they were happening. Sometimes that even happens in our lives too. There might be times when we are in an argument with someone or we don't agree or we want to play with that toy and not that toy or we want to have McDonald's for dinner and not salad. Ew. And sometimes there are even times where we don't even understand why we have to do what mom or dad asks us to. But what this story is teaching us 
is that even though we might have disagreements or fights or arguments or might not understand, they are able to be fixed because like Jacob and Laban did, they first listened to God. And secondly, they started listening and talking to each other. Let me wrap it up in a different way. When we believe that God is unstoppable, like Spider-Man or the speeding train, then we can know that no matter what happens in our lives, whether it's good or bad, when we seek God, so when we listen and read his word, when we worship God, when we pray to God, he will help us overcome those tough situations. And in the end, just like Laban and Jacob, they can make peace. Let's take a moment to remember God's wonderful truth as we prepare to give Him our offering. God, thank you so much for once again always providing for us, Lord. Thank you that we got to eat yummy food this week and that we had a shelter over our heads and that we had comfy beds to sleep in. God, would you provide for those who don't have the things that we do? Lord, we give with all sincerity and joy. Would you bless these tithes and offering? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Lord, if we could, we would fill our hands with all the wonderful things you give us. Then we'd lift them up and give them back to you. of a great child. <laughs> Today, we're doing the Lord's Prayer. Repeat after me. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. The kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. So, boys and girls, it was so wonderful worshiping with you today, and I'm so excited to do it again next week. But until then, see you later. <laughs>